So I recently had a poster for the AIUK 2020 conference that went online, and the aim of this project was to explore Alzheimer's disease pathology using organotopic slice cultures to look at different aspects of the disease. So whilst we have animal models of the disease, none of them perfectly replicate all of the aspects of the disease that we see in humans. So what the aim was to do is to see if using these cultures, which keep nerve cells, all sorts of different cell types, including blood vessels, microglia, astrocytes, um, meaningful synaptic connections as well, keep these cultures alive in dishes and then use certain experimental paradigms to probe particular questions related to a particular single aspect of the disease. So for example, we originally just observed um, mice, so slice cultures from mice which had mutations in APP, which we know in the adult animal plaques and some synapse pathology. Now observing these over time in culture, we found that we saw accumulation of A-beta, as you might expect, and also over time, we saw a loss of synaptic proteins, particularly presynaptic proteins. And this was quite encouraging for us um, in that the presynaptic protein loss is a really key feature of early human Alzheimer's disease. So the fact that we can model losing early synaptic proteins in a dish system means we can look at ways to try and recover it. Now, one of the weirdest results that we found from this was despite the fact that the loss of synaptic proteins correlates really nicely with the increase in A-beta we see in this culture system. Removing A-beta production through application of a base one inhibitor didn't actually rescue the synapse loss in our model. The one thing that we're probing with this is that whether the model itself, which has APP overexpression, whether APP overexpression could also cause synapse loss separately to additional production of A-beta. Now, that will be interesting, not only from telling us whether our models are showing us something different to human Alzheimer's disease, but also whether actually APP overexpression could be something that occurs in aspects of disease, particularly in individual nerve cells responding to damage. It's also important to remember that people with Down syndrome have an extra copy of APP and go on to develop Alzheimer's disease often. So it might not just be an increase in A-beta that's important, but also APP. Um, we're using this model as well, we also probed questions relating to tau, and I'm particularly interested in how lowering normal levels of tau affect both normal responses to synapses, but also in the context of Alzheimer's disease. And I was really interested to find that if we use slice cultures with APP mice crossed to mice which were lacking tau, not only did we not rescue the synapse loss, but we actually found that the mice um, slice cultures from mice lacking tau showed less synaptic protein than from slice cultures with mice with normal tau. So this led me to kind of explore that actually a normal function of tau in a standard situation might be to maintain normal healthy synapses. And sort of a side effect of um, accumulation of tau that we see in Alzheimer's disease might be to disrupt some of these normal functions. So a lot of my work moving forward from this is going to be looking at, can we understand if tau has a normal protein interaction at the synapse that could be disrupted in Alzheimer's? And trying to work out if we're trying to target toxic tau that aggregates, how we can do that safely without inducing effects from damaging physiological tau. Um, and finally, we used this model system to explore angiogenesis. So angiogenesis, um, put simply, is the growth of blood vessels in response to its local environment. And we believe that um, the blood vessels are reacting very differently in Alzheimer's disease to what we see in people without Alzheimer's disease. And very interestingly, although synapse loss, we found, didn't seem to be that A-beta dependent in our model, we saw a huge A-beta dependent effect on the number of blood vessels within the culture system. So early on in the culture, in A-beta producing mice, so the APP mice, we saw a huge increase in the number of blood vessels. And at the end of each blood vessels, we saw an increase in the number of phylopodia, which are extensions coming out from these blood vessels, which allow them to probe into the local environment. And we found that application of a base inhibitor completely normalized this um, change in blood vessels. And this was sort of responsible through a notch three pathway. So, Really, to summarise, it's kind of a broad um, poster which discusses a lot of different uses of the model system, but the idea being that we can use it to pick out very individual questions to understand, okay, 
does this aspect of pathology, is that responsible for A beta or tau or synapses? And getting all this information together, we can then start to build a better picture of what's really happening in a very complex environment in the Alzheimer's disease brain.